What is up everybody, this is Supersite and today I'm going to be talking to you all about Air Server, all the different optimal settings and some tips and tricks to do with everything. Right, so let's get straight into it. Now this is Air Server right here, I've got it connected to my device. I normally, by the way, this will be a gaming voice because I normally do games and so heyday, that's the awesome game I play. So yeah, this here is my device reflected right now. Now I'm going to tell you, go through the different settings like so. Now I did do a video just like before I attempted to do this, but it was half an hour long So I thought I'll try and cut back, keep it real simple, keep it real snappy about what we're going to be talking about Right, so right here, this is the main scene, this is where the general settings are Okay, now the general settings are the most important, the ones that you want to be dealing with the most Now right here, it says the name of your computer, so my computer is called SuperSite HD Now what happens is when, for example, I'll disconnect this When you, when it like, that's what it shows up to, so for example, if I take tap on this and I connect with my device, it comes up as right here, we can see the SuperSite HD YouTube. So that is the name of it. Now you can change the name of that, so let's say we want to call it Bob. We, we call it Bob and then we click this one here, rebroadcast. So that one there will rebroadcast it so everyone will see it as the computer called Bob. And you can auto also have automatic broadcast, rebroadcast automatically. Now by the way, these settings will not automatically update to the devices already connected. Now, Air Server is great for a whole heap of things, like whether it's gaming, whether it's educational, things like on projectors and that. It's really, really useful. Right, so we've done it at Bob, and then we click this one down here called Apply. Right, so now we'll disconnect from this one, right, so we'll disconnect this, and now it's come up right here as it's running as Bob. So now if we go to Connect, it will come up as, for me, as Bob. So right here we reconnect, and as you can see, it's now called Bob. So that's how you can change the name of the computer if you didn't want them to see your actual name or whatever, for whatever reason you want to change it, if there's a whole heap called the same one. So there we go, that's how you do that. Right, now this one here, this is one of the most important ones. So this is called Change password. Now this is very important because it's how devices will connect to your projector or your computer or whatnot. So first of all this one here says is it just under my user account or all of the computers. So for example if you have a whole heap, if it's a family computer or work computer and you've got a whole heap of logons it's whether it's just under you under your login user or if it's under all of them. So I've only got the one user so I'll just stick with just. Now this here is the most important thing. Now currently I've got it on no password which means anyone can connect their device at any time. Now I don't recommend that whether it's gaming or in an educational setting because in an educational setting well if you have no password and you've got a projector up anyone can join in they can put inappropriate stuff up they can start playing music for it through it or whatever you don't want that happening so you want to have something on there now you can have a fixed password so for example if we call it Bob Will like that it normally would come up blank but I've changed the settings but so anyway let's say we call it Bob Will now make sure no one gets this password unless of course people you want to join so if you click apply and then we disconnect from my device like like so, there we go, like so, and now we join, this time it will now require that I add in a password, because it's coming up on my device that I need an AirPlay password, so then you have to type in a password. So there we go, we'll type that in now, and now it's coming through, alright, oh, I got the password wrong, Bob will, and so then you can join that way. Now another setting that there is, is change password, so that one's alright, but then this one here is probably one of my favourite ones, on screen password, so if you click apply this, and then we'll rebroadcast that, well, it's already done automatically, and then we'll disconnect. Now, this one here means that if someone tries to connect, then it will come up with this on your computer. So, 8312, and then you have to type it in on the devices you want to join, and then they will be able to connect like so. So, that is also another option which I really like. Now, if we go to the final one, this one's quite cool. So, if it goes to ask me and apply. Now, what this means is that if people want to join, it comes up on your computer, and it says this person wants to stream on your computer like so. So, for example, right, so that had Okay, right, so there we go, we'll do that, and we've got that applied. So now, we'll connect under Bob, and then this comes up right here. The device SuperSite, that's my iPad, would like to stream content on this computer like connection, and if you wait, then if you run out of time, then it will just go away, and they'd have to request again, and you can deny it, or you can accept it. So if you accept it, then it pops up like so. So that's one of those things. Now, under Show QR Code, this is really useful. So this is if you've got a setting where there's heaps and heaps of people on a network, you know, it's university, it's school, there's a ton of people and it's really hard to find the, the right thing. Now if you click on this here, this thing right here pops up, and if someone brings up their device, whether it be an iPad or like whatever, then they can just scan that on their device. There's this really cool app called this here, Connect, and that one there, you tap on that, and then you just bring up the, you, you scan the QR code, and then the camera comes up, and you just scan it. And so that there is very useful for busy situations. 
situation. So that's what that's for. But generally, I wouldn't, like, you know, unless you have a use for it, that's not really useful. Right, now we have this here. Now we have EarPlay. This is the one that is enabled and running. So this is like, this is what you use for iOS devices. And then you've got Miracast, which is currently disabled because it's only used for Android devices. So if you want to do Android devices, then you enable Miracast. Now my computer can't support that, so that I don't use that anyway. Same with Google Cast. That's for Chromebooks. So if you're using Chromebooks, that one is really useful to have as well. But I just use AirPlay for this. And so they are the general settings. Now moving on to the audio settings, you've got this here is where the uh, set out, selected output is. So for example, my system default is the speakers, and so I'm speaking. This is me here, I'm, regardless of which one. But for example, the reason when you change this is if you had like speakers, you want to play stuff out, it would pop up there and you could add in it like so. Right, so nothing much really with the audio. You can add these sort of settings, but generally, I uh, yeah. That, right, so this one here, this is a display. This is very important. So this one here shows like display name, and then it's got the refresh rate, and then it's got the primary display, it's got the display resolution and the bit depth. And so down here, as you can see, you can add in the display F FPS, which stands for frames per second for non-gamers. Now if we add this, you can see this in the corner, it shows how many frames per second are appearing on my screen. So as you can see, it's pretty good, it's pr it's not very laggy, like I think, I think it works pretty well. So it's about 40 frames per second. Now you can, if you want, change this to the following value, and you can add it to a really high number, although that doesn't, it doesn't really, it, see, as you can see, it just goes crazy like that. But for example, if you wanted it to, to, like, you didn't need it to go really fast and you just want to keep it real simple, you can decrease it to 10 or even to 1. And if we decrease it to 1 and we do this, we apply it, look at this. This is extremely laggy. So I certainly wouldn't recommend doing 1. That's just straight out crazy. But you can change that around if you want. But generally, I would recommend having it the same as the display refresh rate. I recommend that that is probably the best option. So if we apply that, we go back to that. And so yeah, you can see that if you want or you, you don't have to see that. I I don't normally use it, but you can use it if you would like to. Now this one here, I think I'm pretty sure that it just helps it clearer the, the screen. So I would recommend that if it is available. So just press that do the check and then apply. Now always on top, now this one here, right, so if we go for example like this here, this is what I'm recording with right here. Now always on top, if we press that OK, it means, oh right, so wait, settings, right, settings right here. It means that it's always on top as it says. Now always on top can be helpful but it also can be very annoying. So if we go like this, it means that for example if you click like this, it will never go back to that. So for example like when you normally click on another tab like so, it goes to that tab and that other one's gone. But if it's always on top, which some people would want to use, you can never like, it's sort of like always there and you have to sort of drag it out of the way if you want to use anything else. But there are situations where you would use that. So that just means that if you click on another tab, it's always still on the top. So yeah, that's that's with that one. Okay, so we'll click apply because we don't always want that on the top. Now mirroring, this one here is what you optimize it for. As you can see, there's a whole heap of different things. Uh, a lot have been added since 2012 when it came out. So you got like your projected what projector ones you got the iPhones and the iPads and that lots of them work for me for example the iPad one works for me the retina high quality and the 1080p uh, all that one there they they all work fine so for example currently I'm in 1080 but you change it to the one that you want not an incorrect one for example if we do this and we click apply and then click OK watch what happens it, it gets wait wait we oh yeah wait I'm just thinking do we have to disconnect it yeah we have to disconnect it because it, it, yeah the settings that settings you have to reconnect it to change but yeah it's crazy Okay, so there we go, and then we pr do that. Right, so this is what happens if you have it with the incorrect one. As you can see, it's see, it's just an absolute shambles. Yeah, you don't want that. So you want to have it on the correct one, as you can see. So settings, and we go back to the right one. So yeah, make sure you choose the right one. But yeah, Retina, I, I like this one here. This one here is probably my favorite one. And since I haven't got mirror cast enabled, I can't change the buffer on that. But that is another option. And this one here, use single... Uh, right, so also, another setting right here is the slow play network. Work. Now this one here is if you have like a bad inter internet connection, it can be really good to use. Like for example, if you've got slow, mine's fine. But if you did have bad internet, that is one that you might want to use. Uh, then you've got I'm not sure what that one is there, but this one here is if for example you're on a project and you have a whole heap of screens, then you can if you like uh, this is single user mode is off. So if single user mode is on, it means you can only have the one device on there. But if you turn it off, then it means that then you can have heaps and heaps and heaps of different devices there. So for example, I've only got the one, so I only need one, so I'm, I'm just going to keep it like that. But it doesn't matter.
better whether you turn it on or off. So for example, if we turn it on, it doesn't change much. It's just if you had a whole heap of projectors. Right, okay, so that is that setting right there. Now moving on to this one here. Now this one here is one that I generally wouldn't recommend playing with. Luckily there's a reset button. But this one here is pretty, like, the only time you really use this is if it's, like, really dull on a projector. But, for example, you can go, like, from that to, like, that. And it just, it gets, like, see, as you can see, like, it goes crazy. That See, like, brightness, if you do that, it's just black, just about. And then, like, contrast, you can have, like, that or, like, that. And then, you, uh, the saturation. My favorite one, my favorite one is this one here. Like, I never use it, but it just looks cool for the demonstration. See, like, Google is purple and it is purple. It's, like, yeah, you have, know, like, all sorts of weird colors. So, yeah, you can probably... Probably the brightness would be the most useful, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend doing it. And I like it how it updates live, like, as in, like, it tells you what it's doing immediately, shows you. Okay, so there are those settings there. Now, moving on to advanced. Now, this here just has the check for updates. So, if we tap on that, mine's up to date. So, yeah, that's, and you can have the automatic check for updates, which I would recommend doing. Now, this one here, automatic startup. That means that it automatically starts up when I log on to Windows. Uh, and then you can have it, anyone logs on or, like, yeah, but I I, it, I wouldn't do that, like, there's certain situations where you would, it just means every time you log on, it starts up. There are, the pro there are other programs that help, that can do that, but yeah, that's just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be using that, in fact, we'll minimize that just to make this clearer. Right, so yeah, I wouldn't be using that right there, but yeah, yeah, that's an option. And then diagnostics, that's just, you don't really need to worry about that. So yeah, there are those settings, which are really useful, and remember that one of the key things is always putting on something, choosing one of these, probably not the no password, even with gaming, you wouldn't want a random person just joining in the middle of it that would get really annoying right so there we go yeah because it, it's just really inconvenient like I, i'd just be shocked if someone did join i'd be like what but that can happen okay so moving on to this here now right so we'll just move that away now this one here now double clicking it can get it full screen or not full screen like so i'm just checking have i yeah that's that's fine now so yeah you can you can double click it and that will make it full screen also alt this is windows 10 by the way the operating system alt Enter also does that as well as this one here. Right, wait, no, that just shifts it like that. There's, oh, yeah, escape. The, the escape key, when it's in big, can also change it. Now, as you can see, these ones here, like, you can close the window like so. With the view, you can have the always, you can have it, you can change those scenes there and then check for updates in about air, air server. But one of the interesting things is this one here, live stream. And I've actually tried it, I've actually done a live stream from it. Like, I, well, I tried it and it worked. It works, which is really interesting because it's a funny thing with air server. Now, live stream, right, wait, in fact, before I just go into live streaming, I'll talk about record because record is probably one of the best tips and tricks. Well, the things that I love most about it, right? So I, I actually didn't get it for record, I got it for the live stream. But I was looking for videos on it and I couldn't find any videos on air service so I thought I'd do this and if you guys are interested in this and like and subscribe about this video and I can see who subscribes for what video then I can do more videos on this and more in depth I can talk about licenses and a whole heap of other stuff surrounding air server like versus like different things like air show versus air server versus reflector etc anyway another feature which is really cool is the record feature so for example if you go you tap on this and then this records your gameplay really really clearly so we click record and then we we go super site so if you had a whole heap of devices that all be listed here but we've only got the one my ipad called super site and we press record so like that and see the little record icon come up here now if we move it along it's, it's just doing like that then you right click and you click record and you go super site and you go stop and then it comes up here and then you can just call it what you want i'll just leave it at that and then you press save and then it will come up and it will save like so i've got open when finished and so it'll automatically pop up pop up and this is what i just recorded so it's recording of a recording here we go so this here as you can see very clear very very clear i think so yeah if we if we can go to the right so okay so right so we'll just get rid of that can we, oh, okay uh right so yeah i like right i'm just seeing if we can see the settings but yeah it's a nice clear video and it just saves like that and so that is how you record the gameplay now there are some one thing which is a really funny sort of glitch thing is if you press record and then you just like you don't move your device sometimes it just comes up with it with an error and so, like that if you don't move the recording if you don't move this Sometimes, and so that's something to be wary of. So if it says that, it took me ages to work out. That's why it wasn't working. So yeah, that is how you do that. And so recording is really, really cool. And it, it gets really high quality videos. So I'm I'm very happy. Like, I don't record mine this way. But that is one way to do it. This is the first time I'm actually using a headset to record a video. I normally just do it through my audio thing. Okay, anyway, the final one is live stream. Now, this is really interesting, this one. Because it, like, it actually works fine. It live streams fine. Which is really weird. Because it's like a really, in a sense, bad version of OBS. 
It's like, and it, it, it's like, what I like about Ear Server is it is, it's got everything there. All, all the things you, it's got the recording there, it's got the live streaming, and it's, you know, it's great for, like, if you're doing a, Pre presentation there, and I love it how the, the audience, people watching right now, there'll be gamers, there'll be educators, there'll be businessmen, there'll be all sorts. Anyway, and so that is one thing. Now, I do think that there aren't enough settings, to be honest. Like, I love its simplicity. There, It's good that there aren't many settings, in a sense. That's the pro, because it keeps it real simple, and the, all the good default settings you can't change, they've already set there. But then it's not as good in the sense that you, it's there's less, you can't optimize it to how you need it as much. But I do, the settings that are there are fine, but I, and so I do really like it, but it would be nice to see a few more settings, you know, like, if you look at OBS, OBS is just absolutely full of settings, right, so we'll just do that, like, so, and then we'll go settings, and if we go to settings, it's just, like, the output, see, it's got the buy rate, and the rate control, and the buffer size, the CRF, like, this here, the, the, right, so, this here, ESF is almost on the way to, like, it could easily become a streaming platform, like, it, it really does work well, live streaming, but the unfortunate thing is, you can't, edit, you can't have, like, things, like, for example, if we go to full screen, you can't add border things on, you can't add screens in, but they could, if they wanted, they could make it a live streaming platform, which would be cool to see, but yeah, that is one of the things you can do, you can live stream, and it does live stream fine, but that will only stream right what you're seeing right now, that's all it will stream, it will, like, and, and if, for example, if we go into gameplay right here, okay, now I've got it on mute, okay, so this here is a game I play, hey, day, I, I'm not gonna spend long on this, I'm just showing you, and so, this here is, hey, day, and so this here, it would stream it like that, so the streams are pretty fine, and by the way, just to show how it handles lag-wise, you can see that it actually, right, so it's a little bit laggy, but as you can see, it's pretty good, like, and games normally take the most of anything, really, this, this is my farm, but it, it's a game I play, but anyway, as you can see, it's still, like, you can see the snowflakes falling in that, so it's doing pretty well, and if it can handle a game, it's generally pretty good, and so I find that lag-wise, it's actually really, really good, so if we do that, and so yeah, that is one of the things that it can do, it can record gameplay, now one thing if we go to open up task manager, if we bring that one up here, now this here shows how much it uses. Now it does use a wee bit of power to keep it going. So for example, if we move it around like so, there you go, because you're normally going to be moving it around, it takes about 30% like of your CPU. Now my CPU is like, my computer's really old, it's Windows 7, although it's Windows 10 operating system. So most computers that you're using will be much more updated. But that's just something to keep in mind. It's not going to crash your computer or anything, but it is, that it's just, it does use it little bit of powder to do it see like with when you stop it goes away now it does cost 14.99 us dollars for a consumer license so that is just something to keep in mind as well so anyway i really hope you enjoyed the video i can if you do like these kind of videos i'm doing about this and i can do reflector and all sorts of other programs if you want me to i'm just thought i'd try it out see how it goes if you like this kind of how i've done it and think i've covered it well or let me know in the comments and like the video and subscribe can do more videos like this. I just sort of do one video because I couldn't find the video I was looking for. I was looking for a video on air service settings and that their support is really useful, but the actual videos on YouTube about how to change the settings, what they mean and all that, there was nothing really there that I could like draw from. So I thought, well, I'll just study it and make my own video and work out and test it. So I've done that. And so I really hope you enjoyed the video. I learnt, you learned some tips and tricks and how to do some stuff. Please ask me any questions you want in the comments and I'll try my absolute best to answer them. So yeah, I hope this presentation helped out and just helped you know some settings. So yeah, this has been Supersight and I hope you enjoyed. See ya!